welcome to the channel. Today, as you might expect, we are picking up where we left off yesterday. And uh, if you watched the last episode, you know we had a little bit of a problem getting the crankcase together the first time we tried it. And uh, it's a problem entirely of our own creation. We just forgot to put the alignment pins in when we assembled the crankcase halves, which meant uh, basically a redo. But we're not bitter. We're back at it again today. And uh, I think we're going to have a much better result. Um, now you will know trying to be a bit more sparing with the uh, sealing compound today. Uh, yesterday it did drip out quite a bit and she made a bit of a mess. So we are not about messes unless you're talking about leaving tools on the floor and dirt everywhere because those kind of messes we're all about. But we are not about a messy crankcase. The other thing we are not about is forgetting the alignment pins. Now, so what I've done is I've uh, put our eight and nine millimeter bolts in position, and now I'm gonna grease the threads, now that I'm all organized. I'm gonna grease the threads of the eight millimeter bolts. You do not grease the threads of the nine millimeter bolts. And again, I assume like a Conrad's, this is to help us get an accurate torque measurement on it. So we're just going hand tight for now. And we're not worrying about the six millimeter bolts at this point. We're only doing the eight and the nine millimeters. Now we do have a specific tightening order. I'm not following it right now. We'll just worry about that when we get to the tighter stages. As I say, this is just purely to snug them up.
and the 10 mil bolt takes 29 pound feet of torque. Smaller ones each take 20. Now we can reinstall the alternator shaft nut. And this one takes 36 pound feet of torque, um, but no one's gonna have a torque wrench if it's in there. So when it comes time to tighten this down, it's gotta go pretty hard on it. And while you do, it's a good idea to put a wrench onto the uh, generator side of the crank, just to keep it from spinning away on you. Yeah, looks like that fits either way. And this bolt takes a ceiling washer. And there's no torque spec listed for this bolt, uh, and it's a tiny little one. So, just try to go for good and tight. Something like that. Now another thing you're going to want to do, uh, before you get too far along, uh, if you haven't already, you definitely want to reconnect your shift lever, and uh, check to make sure that this thing can knock through the gears properly, that everything's engaging. And uh, this is a bit tricky, I've kind of found a sweet spot here, uh, but normally you need to kind of turn the crank, make sure the con rods aren't binding up, um, pull the chains out. I've got a long bolt here holding this chain out, and uh, watch the timing chain as well, that that doesn't get sucked up and start binding up. And you kind of fiddle with it, hit a gear, fiddle with it, hit a gear, fiddle with it, hit a gear. Um, but what you should end up with is something kind of like this. So right now we're in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and we fiddle with this just a bit. There, there's sixth. Fifth, fourth, third, second, first. Sorry, that's first. There's your mechanical joy there. When that happens, you uh, then you feel pretty good because that means, for now at least, unless we screw something else up, we don't need to worry about anything that's going on in here. Um, we've done everything correctly at this point, we're feeling pretty good about it, and uh, with confirmation that the thing shifts properly, we can start reassembling uh, all the oil passages, oil pump um, pickup on the bottom end of the engine here. That's exactly what we're going to do next. Now we're ready to reinstall the oil pump. Uh, so the larger of the alignment pins, along with a new O-ring, goes into this passage here. The two smaller alignment pins go in this position and this position. And as before, we'll just kind of prime the O-rings as we go. Now we can install the oil pump. Now the three oil pump bolts, there are two longer ones, one shorter one. The shorter one goes in this position, and the longer ones go there. And we'll use a small amount of Loctite on those. Torque spec is not listed, but uh, 10 foot pounds is probably plenty. Now we can reinstall the oil pump sprocket, noting the markings out.
And the sprocket bolt also takes a little bit of Loctite. Right. And torque spec is listed at uh, 11 pound feet, I think. But uh, you're not going to be able to get a torque wrench in there, so just try to get it good and tight. Now we can install the oil passage pipes. Uh, again, I think it's impossible to screw this up. They're all different lengths at least. But uh, we do have new oil rings for those, so we'll install those while we're at it. Now we'll install the pickup tube. And again, we've got a new seal for this. And the notch will fit right in to the notch there. Ditto for the pressure relief valve. Now we're ready to reinstall the oil pan. Uh, so we've got our handmade gasket here. We're not going to use sealant. You probably could. No judgment if you do. Now note the clamp goes in this position. And all these bolts are the same length. That's our spec isn't listed, but uh, we'll go to about 10 pound feet. And in kind of a cross, uh, cross bolting pattern. There. Now with everything uh, on the bottom of this engine that we need to do done, uh, we're going to move it back onto the motorcycle jack. That'll allow us, uh, as we're reassembling the engine, to make sure that we're going to be able to actually get it back into the frame. It's just going to make it a little bit easier. So the next thing we'll do is uh, I'll move it over there and flip it over. But uh, no sense watching me do that. So. Uh, the student among us would have noticed that uh, one of my engines says it's actually out. It's been out for some time. Uh, it came out during disassembly. And um, this is a little bit of an odd case. So this, uh, this is the stud here. And it's actually a different part than these other ones. It's about half a centimeter longer. And uh, it actually has a little flare down at the bottom. Let's see if I can get a better view of that. It has a flare. So. Yeah, I kind of racked my mind trying to figure out what that's for. It actually acts as an alignment pin. So um, when we attach the cylinders, we'll have alignment pins 
in the front positions, um, but we won't have any on the back. So this set actually acts as an alignment pin. And uh, just kind of a curio, if you, if you notice, uh, this one is a little bit longer. It's supposed to be that way. Again, you wouldn't think so. I'm, I'm still a little surprised that Honda went through the effort of uh, making a longer stud, putting it in this engine, but um, who knows. Anyway, we'll reinstall that now. We're going to use red thread locker for this. And we've got jam nuts here that we're going to use to tighten this down. There's no torque spec listed, which is a little unusual. So uh, we'll just try and get it as tight as we can. Well, not as tight as we can, but darn tight, I guess. Should do this. And we'll let this dry before we remove the lock nut, just to make sure we don't jar it loose, I guess. Anyway, now we're up here, we'll uh, take a look at the starter next. Now upon review, um, I did actually screw this up. So um, there's these two mounting bolts here that actually hold the starter on. These two bolts here actually just hold the starter together. So. Um, you don't need to remove these two bolts, you can just remove the whole unit as an assembly, unless you're going to take it apart to bench test it. But um, anyway, so we've got a rubber washer here. Actually, let's do this at the bench. So here's the starter, and uh, we're not going to service this now, this thing's filthy on the inside. And I imagine I will be coming back to this, um, but I might make that a future, you know, subject of a future how-to, uh, how to actually service one of these. But um, for the time being, we're just going to make sure our rings are in decent shape. Uh, there's a seal on the back there that we will grease. Now there's a small tab here that fits into the, um, I guess the case, the center case. And so once that fits into place, you won't be able to rotate this assembly. And then you'll know that's correctly orientated. Now there's another tab that sticks up right here. And that matches up with these casting marks on the uh, rear cover. So the most precise way possible. Line that up, screw it up a couple times, there. When it won't move you know you've got it. Then for the front cover, uh, check your O-rings, it's a minimum right now. These are all in good shape and I didn't bother ordering the seals when I made the order. And you locate these alignment marks here. So there's an alignment mark on the rear cover, on well, the back case, I guess, two on the center portion. And that will line up with this line here. And if you sight down the bolt holes, everything should line up properly. Then we can reinstall our screws. Uh, no, they do have little lock washers on them. There wasn't much I could do to clean these things up. They're pretty soft, so if I went and scratched them up with a wire brush, they would just look even worse.
There, I can put this back on the crankcase. There's two bolts, the longer of which goes here, and the shorter of which goes here. No torque spec listed, so I'll just go fairly tight. Almost a knuckle, knuckle buster there. Been pretty good this job so far. There we go. And uh, as part of your due diligence, you just want to give each of these uh, engine sets a little twist and make sure none of the others are loose. That does happen over time. And at this point, seeing as we've uh, gone through such pains to uh, keep it clean so far, so I'll just kind of lay some rags over top. Good enough. We're not as worried about micro particles, but um, definitely any iron filings, steel shavings, that sort of thing. You wouldn't want those in there. Now, down on the bottom side of the engine, um, we can start by reinstalling the uh, clutch actuator rod. And um, I've installed new seals into the shifter cover here. But before we do, we actually we put a little bit, bit of 3-bond, just the seams of the uh, crankcase halves. Well, the manual says 3-bond, I'm just using the uh, Permatex Ultra Black here. We don't want to do, go too crazy. just to cover up those seams. Now we install the three alignment pins. Never mind, it's just the two alignment pins for the shifter cover. Slide our gasket into place. And just like so. Now we can install this metal retainer um, along with these bolts. Uh, note that this one is a little bit longer than this one. So the shift cover, uh, this is going to seem a little unusual and it actually took me a couple tries to figure it out. But um, so these bolts, the 10 millimeter bolts, go in uh, this position, this position, and this position. They do not go in this position, this position, or this position. Those are left empty. And um, when we install the outer cover, um, that's when those bolts get installed. So, those are supposed to be empty. It looks funny. 
Um, and then the 8mm bolts go at the bottom, and those are the nicer looking bolts, which is how you can tell that's where they go, uh, aside from counting them. And uh, yeah, so it takes a couple tries. Uh, if you feel one bottoming it out, obviously don't, don't wrench on it really hardly, pull it out and try one of the smaller ones, because I believe this bolt is slightly longer than this one and this one. But uh, again, I just kind of fiddled with it until I got it all to fit together. And there is an alignment pin that's supposed to go here. We have not installed that yet. We'll do that um, after the motor's back on the bike, uh, just because we don't want that falling out and getting lost or whatever else. Now for the water pump, um, we've installed our new O-ring here on the base. Um, I don't think we're allowed to lubricate this one because it's in the water system, I guess. Well, no, it wouldn't get wet there. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to go in dry with it. Um, probably not going to be a huge deal anyway, just make sure it doesn't get bound up. And uh, you'll need to make sure that the output shaft from the oil pump lines up with the input uh, shaft on the impeller here. And if you haven't already, obviously, give this thing a visual to make sure it's not all dinged up. I'm not going to tighten this down yet. I will just run it in a little bit. Now for the outer housing. We do have a new O-ring for this. So we'll pull this little junk one out. So we'll install the new one there and try to make sure it doesn't fall out or get pinched. Just gonna install it like so. So, the water pump reinstalled and uh, most of the other major components in place. We're essentially done with the crankcase for now. Um, yeah, as we're seeing this thing start to take shape or return to its original shape, seeing, uh, you know, obviously our next step is going to be to revisit the pistons and cylinders. We'll uh, install our new rings, slide those onto the engine here, and uh, take it from there. But in the meantime, thanks for watching.